Donovan Clark Current, Lieutenant Commander, United States Navy, retired. Came back to the United States in March of 1969. Became an instructor of electrical engineering at the Naval Academy. And I got there in March and I decided, or I got asked, to write a textbook for electrical engineers who were not majoring in electrical engineers. It was called Fruit Juice, where it's, Juice was the electrical engineering program. Fruit Juice was the course that the non-electrical engineers would take to learn about radars and sonars and radios and things like that. So for three or four months I wrote the uh, textbook for the non-electrical engineers. And then I taught electrical engineering while I was at the Naval Academy for three years. And uh, I got married while I was there. And I was going to get out of the Navy after 13 years. And uh, I got selected for post-grad school at the Naval Academy. And I called my detailer and I said, what's this all about? I don't want a PhD. They said, no, we want a non rickover nuke. I said, what is a non rickover nuke? Well, Admiral Rickover had hand-selected every officer in the nuclear navy. He's the father of the nuclear navy. And the navy had decided he was going to die one of these days. And since he had hand-selected every nuclear officer in the navy, the navy felt that he needed some people who might not be beholden, be beholden to Admiral Rickover. And they wanted us to go get a nuclear engineering degree and become part of the nuclear navy that was not beholden to Rickover. I said, what do I got to do? He said, you got to go to Penn State University, get a nuclear engineering degree. I said, gee, you know, I've already spent four years in the college for the Navy. I spent three years teaching at the Naval Academy. And, gee, I, I could go to back school, I guess, and stay in the Navy for a little longer. So I did that. I went and got a, a nuclear engineering degree, master's degree, and an industrial engineering master's degree, uh, minoring in welding while I was at Penn State. And I got stationed after arguing with the Navy and going to Portsmouth Naval Shipyard to make sure they wanted me because I was not a submariner. So I went to the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard as a uh, ship soup, which is a uh, military schedule of operations, if you will, at a shipyard. So I was a ship soup for an assistant ship soup for a couple of years there. Then I became a senior ship soup of the USS uh, John Adams, which was a ballistics missile submarine that was supposed to be done the day I took it over. It took me 18 more months to get it out because of the nuclear part of the overhaul just seemed to always take much longer than it was supposed to. A ballistics missile submarine is something else. <laughs> it's long, big. Uh, it was. Uh, an experience, again, a, a nuclear submarine is a special part of the Navy, unbelievably special part of the Navy. Um, and it was a lot of work. I, I never got so seasick in my life as when we did the uh, uh, acoustic trials, had to stay on the, on the surface, and a submarine and it was up in the waters off the coast of New Hampshire. It was uh, a lot of rocking and rolling, and I got seasick. And I don't normally get seasick. I was a smart ass. <laughs> and I thought I knew what I was doing most of the time. And uh, I did, in fact, have a big effect on the Navy because I got the uh, nuclear repair business out of behind times. They, they were no longer controlling overhauls when I left the Navy. And uh, in fact, I got asked to come back a couple times because of my scheduling efforts uh, after I retired. Uh, I, and I did go back, but they didn't keep me for very long as a civilian just to consult for a little bit because of my efforts to change the way the nuclear business was scheduled to get them out of the problem area that they had. Uh, you need to understand that in the nuclear business, you have to have for someone to turn a wrench in a reactor, you actually have to have six different people watching what was going on before the mechanic could turn the wrench. That include Radcon people, Naval Reactors Representative Office, Rickover's guys, the ship's crew, uh, the civilian general foreman or foreman, and then the mechanic, and uh, a 
which was, oh, and ins nuclear inspector. So six people had to be there for that mechanic to turn the wrench. And that was what was taking so long because they couldn't get all six of them all the time to get there to turn the wrench. And I spent a lot of time figuring out how to get the scheduling done better so that those six people could come together regularly to get their job done. Whereas before, it seemed that they never could get it together. So I had a big effect. Saved the Navy a lot of money. So when I finished that job, I volunteered to become the nuclear repair officer at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. Uh, and again, my boss said, you don't want that job. I said, but they need me. <laughs> I can help them. <laughs> They've been holding up all these overhauls. So I got involved in the nuclear engineering program there as a nuclear repair officer. Uh, and I did that until I got a, uh, an unaccompanied tour in Iran in 1978. And I went to my shipyard commander and said, what do I have to do to stay here one more year and retire? He said, shave your beard. Admiral Zumwalt had allowed us to grow beards, and when I left the Naval Academy, I stopped shaving, and I had then six years of beard growth. It was trimmed reasonably well, but it was like this. And he said, shave your beard. Yes, sir. <laughs> Stayed one more year and retired from the Navy. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs>